Now, for the longest time, the longest time, I've been telling people that advocating against freedom of speech is a double-edged sword. If you advocate against freedom of speech or you're one of these, well, you know, I'm for free speech, but I'm, I'm against hate speech, you know, one of those, like, idiots, right? It is a double-edged sword, and if you advocate for another person's speech to be taken away, then that can also happen to you, because you're not in charge of it. The governments and institutions are in charge of it. And the government and institutions, you know, definition for what may constitute as hate speech probably will not match yours. However, they can already take your speech away. There's too late. There's nothing you can do about it now. And here is an example of that very thing happening. UK academic sues university after losing role in critical race theory row. Oh my God, did this person speak out against the holiest of holies, critical race theory? No. Wait for it. <laughs> Aisha Canom claims discrimination after Leeds Beckett accused her of using racist language in tweets. <gasps> oh, racist tweets. Oh my God, this must be one of those alt writer super ultra Nazis that I've heard about. But no, wait. <laughs> An academic is suing Leeds Beckett University after she was dropped from her advisory role over tweets calling a mixed race man a house negro. It's alleging the, dis the decision was discriminatory because of her belief in critical race theory and black radicalism. Double-edged sword. The university ended its association with the academic advisor Aisha Canham after accusing her of racist language in relation to tweets using the term house negro and coconut. <laughs> The former in a question. Uh, in what is believed to be the first case of its kind and probably going to be the first of many because you guys keep screwing with freedom of speech, Canham is arguing that critical race theory and black radicalism are protected beliefs under the Equality Act. There are a lot of things that are protected beliefs under the Equality Act. However, you know, that just means that the government aren't allowed to, you know, arrest you for it and punish you for it. These institutions, they are private institutions and they can do what they want. Aisha, you need to calm down. You need to, you need to sit down, you racist, right? I mean, see if, you, see if you don't want to get in trouble for it, then just don't be racist, Aisha. It's... Uh, and what is believed, uh, in fact, hold on, critical race theory says that race is a social construct used to oppress people of colour, cut colour, colour, sorry, I've been watching a lot of uh, North Korean stuff lately, <laughs> of colour, which begets systemic racism. Yes, uh, everything is invented uh, for the benefit of white people. Essentially, critical race theory is essentially, see what the far right say about Jews, Critical race theorists say the exact same things about white people. That's the easiest explanation of a critical race theory. The legal claim has been supported by many anti-racist organisations. Incredible, because she said things that were racist. Amazing that anti-racist organisations are supporting a racist who said racist things. And academics in an open letter. It was penned by Kehinde Andrews, a professor of black studies at Birmingham City University. I wonder what jobs you can get with that degree, uh, and accuses Leeds Beckett of censoring central topics in black intellectual thought. I mean, I, I agree. I agree. Universities absolutely should not be censoring subjects. And I'm sure that you will agree with that statement across the board. I mean, if you want to make the point about uh, universities censoring subjects, then obviously you mean all subjects of any and all kinds. Surely you don't mean just the ones that you like and you wouldn't be biased and therefore rendering your statement completely empty. I mean, surely not. Surely not. I mean, you seem, you seem like a good guy. You seem like a good guy. I mean, like, obviously a wealthy man. You must be, you must be rich for that black studies degree, man. I've heard there's all kinds of government contracts, you know, all kinds of printing money, printing money. Uh, the letter also points out that Malcolm X popularized the use of house negro <laughs> which described the black people who defended the status quo, eager to fit in with and please white people. Canom is crowdfunding the legal costs. I mean, 
is it not okay for black people and white people to hang out? Like, or like, I've I've seen a lot of people who like chastise black people for acting too white. I mean, I I think people can act whatever way they want. I don't understand the problem, Asia. Help me understand the mind of a racist, Asia. I've always, I've always, I've always struggled with it myself. Help me understand how you've arrived at that conclusion. The first tweet was sent in February after the conservative political commentator Calvin Robinson said, Calvin Robinson, good boy, good boy, uh, said on B BBC One's The Big Questions that he had been attacked for being black and right wing. For example, I've been called Bounty. <laughs> Bounty. Uh, Uncle Tom and House Negro for not having the right opinion. That's right, I completely forgot that black people must think a certain way and must have certain predetermined uh, political beliefs. Yes, that's... Mm -hmm. uh, on 14th of February, the Race Trust, which was founded by Canham, posted a tweet tagging Robinson and asking, does it not shame you that most people see you as a House Negro? Canham said she did not post the tweet, but accepted responsibility for it. Um, I think most people see Calvin as a man who has some opinions that he would like to share and get out there. Not a lot of people are looking at him and imagining, oh, black, how unusual to be a right winger. Hmm, based, like... No, nobody's doing that. Calvin's a man that's got some opinions that he wants to get out there. You're the one that's viewing everything through the lens of race because you have your little trust, which I'm sure you make a tidy sum from, you know, looking at everything through the lens of race. Extremely profitable nowadays, and it comes with a lot of clout. It's, it's, mo it's modern-day racketeering and extortion. That's what it is. Bring us in an advisor. We will release sounds. Everyone's going to call you racist. Everyone's going to call you racist. Ooh. Fucking hell, man. Modern, modern day mafia. Uh, after a barrage of critical responses, which she says were fermented by right wing trolls, isn't it amazing that anytime people get called out on their bullshit, it's called trolling, but whenever they do the same thing, it's activism? <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's so weird, man. These people are like so hypocritical. Uh, <laughs> I'm noticing a trend. Uh, she personally used the term coconut when responding to someone about the earlier tweet. The next day, the university tweeted saying she was not an employee, but it had terminated its association with her and condemns the use of racist language. Canom told The Guardian that the terms were meant to be offensive because they are anti-racist terms. No, they're not. <laughs> they're racist terms. Uh, you're highlighting a problem. It's almost upholding white supremacy. There it is. Yeah, there it is. It's always convenient to have a boogeyman to blame for all of your own fuck-ups. Um, it's so contradictory, it's unreal. Racists have taken these terms and defined them for us. There is no way they are racist. You're making assumptions about a person based on the colour of their skin. That's what coconut bounty, you know, house negro and all that stuff means. You're making assumptions on someone going, how do you have these political opinions? These are the political opinions you are supposed to have based on the colour of their skin. You're making a judgement based on the colour of their skin. They're racist terms. Suck it. Uh, <laughs> they are meant to make someone feel uncomfortable. Most racist terms often do. Uh, and just because something is offensive doesn't mean you can't say it. I agree, Canom. Can I say the N-word? <laughs> just because something's offensive doesn't mean I can't say it. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about that. Am I, uh, you know, Steve McWhite man, um, allowed, allowed to say the N-word then? I mean, just because something's offensive doesn't mean I can't say it. Um, Canham said the university's actions had affected her professionally and personally in the terms of her mental health. I understand the feeling, Canham. Unfortunately, institutions don't care. Uh, Leeds Beckett condemned me to be a racist, she said. I still get trolled on Twitter all the time, and they, the trolls, post Leeds Beckett's tweets. It's always going to be there. That's my main worry, especially as the work that I do is anti-racist. Well, we live in a post-forgiveness age. This is post-forgiveness. It doesn't matter. Like, the way things work now on the online space, you do one bad thing, doesn't matter if it was two weeks ago or 20 years ago, 
that's you, you're out. That's it, it's gone. You will always, always forever be judged by the one bad thing. That's the way things are. I mean, one thing that people do to me all the time is they post that fucking BBC article saying that I was linked to a forum that had racist posts. When what really happened is I was in a Discord that other people were saying racist stuff in. Other people said it had nothing to do with me. The funny thing about that article as well is, is a lot of the people that uh, said the racist stuff all joined the day before the article was written and came out. It's curious that, isn't it? It's really interesting. But that's what it's called. It's called defense archaeology. You do one bad thing in your life, that's it. You are kicked off, you are exiled from the village, and that's just the way things go. Do what I did. Turn lemons into lemonade. Uh, in June, finding that gender-critical views were a protected belief, the Employment Appeals Tribunal says that only views akin to Nazism or totalitarianism were unworthy of protection for rights of freedom of expression and thought under the Equality Act. Interesting. Totalitarianism. So being an Antifa is not a protected belief under the Equality Act. Interesting. Interesting. Emily Cole, a co-founding partner of Cole Can Solicitors, which is representing Canham, said that the case would establish whether Canham's beliefs were protected. She added, immediately publishing her termination on Twitter and publicly condemning her as racist was a gross abuse of power and sets a dangerous precedent. Uh, it is awful when you have large institutions falsely calling you a racist. It sucks. It's awful. It's terrible. But you learn to live with it and you learn to suck it up. I mean, I had two articles coming out about me yesterday calling me alt-right. It's 2021 and journalists still don't understand what alt-right is. I mean, that's because journalists, I mean, you need to have a sub-90 IQ to become a journalist. They're, they're, most journalists, I mean, when you meet them and you speak to them, are extremely stupid people. Really, really stupid. Uh, a spokesperson for the university said we are unable to comment on ongoing legal proceedings, although we can confirm that we will be presenting a detailed response against that claim. And then here is the Guardian begging for money because they talk a lot of shit a lot of the time. Yeah. Basically, like I said before, when you advocate for basically the thing that's happening to Canom right now are things that leftists have done and cheered for and supported and encouraged and pushed towards right-wingers solidly for like they're really hard for the last five years right and now it's happening to them because this is the problem when you advocate for such things you don't get to be in charge right when you advocate for the club you're not going to be the person holding it someone else will be and then it's up to the person holding the club it's up to their discretion what constitutes it and you were the one that advocated for it so you know <laughs> it's not it's not very, very far. It's not much of a distance for the boot to go from your tongue to your neck. It's only a few inches, right? When you advocate for these things, you don't get to scream and complain when they happen to you, right? You're the turkeys that voted for Christmas. But hopefully, hopefully this will be, you know, you're, you're learning a lot of harsh lessons over the last while. Hopefully you will realise the error of your ways and come to the side of freedom of speech. It's been years and you haven't yet, but, you know, I'm here if you want to talk. 